All right, so we're pretty much just winging it here. guys welcome back to the channel today we are taking the brand new billet block that we had made for the tourist show and we're going to be assembling it so guys i went ahead and got the billet motor all on the engine stand right next to our old blown up motor and today what we want to do is we want to completely assemble this thing now when i say assemble it i'm actually not going to be putting any rods or pistons in this it's not going to be running and driving, but what I do need to do is mock up everything and see exactly how this motor is going to look. So I can grab some measurements for our dry sump oiling system. So that is going to be the big thing today is get the cylinder heads, the exhaust manifolds or turbo manifolds, cams, everything in here. And so I can measure the exact amount of room I'm going to have on, uh, it's going to be, I don't, wow. This side, that side of the block, wow, real brain fart here. This side of the block, we're going to be mounting a dry sump uh, oil pump with a pulley and a belt to connect to the crankshaft. So let's get to that. So first thing we're gonna have to do to assemble the billet block is we are missing our dowel pins for our head studs. So we gotta pull these guys out and get them in there so that way we locate the head properly. But one real cool thing I wanna show you guys is the difference in the head studs. Check this out. So right here on the table, I have one of my head studs that we had custom made. This is a ARP 625 age stud. The strongest stud you can get in 11 millimeter. Let me show you the new ones. This is the new head stud. This is a half inch head stud to go into the billet blocks. I mean, they are way beefier that way we can hold down the cylinder heads with all the power you know 60 70 80 pounds of boost ready to go to show you how big these freaking head studs are this is one completely bottomed out this is one that's just barely threaded in just to really show you guys how strong this block is that is how deep these studs are so the reason we make them this deep is because when you just have this much you know, like up here threaded, you can pull the material up. So when you start torquing this 100 foot pounds and then you have a bunch of uh, pressure inside the cylinders, it's wanting, it's literally gonna deform this. But when you attach the stud all the way down here, all of a sudden you have to pull all this material. So it makes it really rigid. All right, guys, big freaking moment here. Cylinder head is going on the billet block. Look at that. Wow. Would you just look at that? Look at this. <laughs> yeah, well. SHO cylinder head on the block. Now, the unfortunate news is I can't really bolt it down because I'm pretty sure a half inch head stud yeah, we're gonna have to drill the heads. So I gotta come up with a solution for that for now, but that can pretty much sit the way we need to. Like, unfortunate situation, but like I said, we got these big massive half inch head studs and they don't fit in the hole. So we're gonna have to have the heads drilled to get all these up to half inch so we can fit these big old head studs. But uh, this allows us to at least Mock the motor up with no bolts and see how much room we're gonna have for our dry sump. So I got one of the turbo manifolds that me and ASP headers built. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here because this is what's really gonna be the moment where we see how much room we're working with. And I'll throw some bolts in it. So, 
This is where we were planning on mounting the dry sump. And um, we don't have a whole lot of room to work around the header. Uh, I need to do some measurements, figure out if we're gonna be able to actually mount a dry sump in here and exactly how forward does it come. Cause my also, my plan is to run a mechanical fuel pump on the back of this dry sump. And that will be, you know, uh, mounted basically on the back side over here. So we may end up having to modify this header. Hopefully not. So this is basically the dry sump pump that we are looking at. It's a four stage unit. So if you guys don't know anything about dry sumps, I'll have a whole nother video on this later, but basically this thing's gonna be eight inches long past the belt drive. So if we go onto the motor that we blew up, the belt drive is gonna actually end up being attached to the front of the crank damper and then a belt to drive the pump. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull this damper off, get everything off of here, mount it up on there so we can get a good measurement and find out if we're gonna be able to even fit a uh, dry sump on this thing with the current exhaust manifolds. There we go. Damper is off. I'm gonna slide that on. Just like so. Wow, I'm just like noticing. Look how easy this thing spins. All right, now that we got the crank damper on, things are kind of looking really promising. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the cylinder head back on with the exhaust header and uh, see how much room we got. So now this is looking pretty promising because I was really scared about the dry sump pump going behind this manifold. But as you can see, when we have the drive out here, we kind of got a lot of room to play right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this up. See the eight inches is like right by the mounting boss. So that means the dry sump pump won't even contact behind here because we're basically talking about putting the end of the oil pump somewhere like right here with the mechanical fuel pump being right here, literally right behind the exhaust manifold. So that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a little sketch. We're gonna have to see if that's actually gonna work. All right guys, so check this out. I bought these years ago, right? And I never really knew these things even existed. And I was like, you know, it sounded really cheap for what it was. So I went ahead and bought it. Well, now I regret it because I should have bought way more. These things, are extinct now check this out it is not billet but it is the next best thing we got brand new cylinder heads never used from the ford factory check those things out oh yeah and we got two of them i got plenty more sets well not plenty more i got a couple more sets but there we go we got brand new front and rear cylinder heads I'm gonna go ahead, pop these in the truck. We're gonna go up to the machine shop, get these things machined for some half inch head studs. All right, we're here at the machine shop. Went ahead and dropped these off for my buddy Keith. This is his machine shop. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of filming in here just for his little bit of privacy, but I'm also dropping off a K-series input shaft. We will get into that a little bit later. That's a whole nother project, but this guy has been doing my machine work for absolutely years. He does an amazing job. He's got all the all the good big equipment. You can see him working on some GTR stuff right now. So, back to the house. Guys, I just got back from the machine shop. Got these head slap on here. Shoo, boy. Guys, this thing is starting to become real life. We got a billet motor two brand new cylinder heads, half inch ARP head studs. So the only thing that's next that we really have to accomplish is we have to mount a full dry sump oiling system. So I'm a little bit new when it comes down to dry sump stuff. So I hit up a lot of companies, right? And I was really confident with talking with uh, Armstrong Race Engineering's ARE 
dry sumps. Uh, they are www.drysump.com. Like, easy enough, right? And they were kind enough to walk through everything with me and tell me everything I needed to know about mounting a dry sump to this motor. And they sent over a care package. So right in this box, we got a brand new one and a half inch section four stage pump. So four stage pump basically means that we have three scavenge sides, which these will pull oil from the oil pan. And we have one pressure side. So this will suck in the oil from our tank that we're gonna have remotely mounted on the car. And then pressure out will go into the motor so we have constant good oil pressure. So the big objective today is to get this thing basically mounted right here on the side of the motor. And then this thing will be driven off of this little mandrel that we have that bolts to the front of our ATI damper with a belt. So we'll basically just have a belt that'll connect the dry sump pump. And then uh, there we go, we have a full dry sump oiling system. So we have a, we have a lot to do. I've never done this. Hopefully I can even do this thing right. They were kind enough to send over this little plate, which is already drilled. It's already drilled for the bolt pattern on the dry sump. So my idea is basically we'll figure out how to mount this plate to the block and, uh, and then mount the pump. But the trick is, is that we're gonna have to mount the pump at the exact same angle like forward and back and the exact correct depth to where the belt runs correctly because like if we mount this thing too far back then the belt will want to walk the wrong way if we mount it at a downward angle or an upward angle and it's not completely zero to this then the belt's going to want to ride like that or like that on the pulley and that'll shorten the belt length and or the belt life and could you only imagine going down the track at 9,000 RPM and your oil system pump belt breaks and then all of a sudden you have no oil pressure. Like you could really hurt the motor. So we gotta make sure we gotta get this right. So I picked up one of these uh, little digital angle gauges, right? So my thought is that to make sure we get the right angle, if we basically sit this on the snout Like you gotta make sure it sits completely flush on that little snout. It's like we're 1.2 degrees. So we're basically like zero, zero degrees to, up 1.2, something like that. So I'm gonna do some brainstorming. I'll let you guys know what I come up with. Earlier in the video, we were talking about the mechanical fuel pump. So on the back of this dry sump, we have this little three bolt flange where a mechanical fuel pump would go. And like we kind of figured, the exhaust manifold sitting right here, and that is just a fire waiting to happen. So as you can see, if we pick the dry sump pump up and we kind of guesstimate where it's gonna go, you can see that's gonna run literally right into the header. So. So we hit up our guys at Motion Raceworks. We picked up this little three bolt flange, which is basically going to adapt the back of this to a cable drive. So now we don't have this big fuel pump sitting right here, right behind the header. And we're gonna be able to run a cable right around the motor to a mechanical fuel pump that's gonna sit on the car. All right, so we're pretty much just winging it here. Uh, I got the dry sump pump mounted up to the, uh, the big plate. And I got a, uh, a precision straight edge. So basically what I'm gonna try to do is just take this straight edge, lay it flat against that little mandrel on the crank right here. And then put this dry sump pump up here and then make these two ends match. And then try to guesstimate where I'm gonna drill a hole in this for the block. Three hours later. All right, guys, well, there is your first look at a dry sump system mounted on the side of the billet block, which was perfect because this little piece from Motion Raceworks where we got our cable drive, it's pretty close to the header, but it should work. Uh, I talked to Waterman in there, basically, like, just put some heat wrap on it and make sure you service this cable because we're going to have a pretty thick cable coming out to drive the fuel pump. But right now, all we have is a single bolt 
right in there that's uh, keeping this. So what we need to do now is get our angle. So I'm gonna put this on the crank one more time and you see best we can we're down 0.5 degrees so i'm going to put this right there and we're going to pull down or actually we might have to go up on this one engine stands kind of bouncing around but we got down 0.7 degrees and then this one was down 0.9 These answers are kind of like all over the place. Down 0.6. Check it one more time. It's kind of hard because this is also aluminum, this little mandrel, so it's not magnetic. But down 0.6. There we go. All right. So now that we got that kind of where we need it, I have to build a second mounting tab. So we're going to have a motor plate bolted to the face of this. So we're gonna have a big plate that's gonna go through this dry sump right here. So I can't really build anything that's gonna go through the plate. So my idea is that we're going to cut a piece of this aluminum off. We're going to make a bolt hole, drill it, and then weld it to this. So basically like a piece of aluminum that's gonna come out and up. And then hopefully that's enough support. So I cut out this little piece this little piece is gonna basically slide right up in there, just like that. And I'm just gonna weld this in place, weld that to the plate, and then we got at least two bolts that uh, hold this dry sump pump on. I don't know if we're gonna need more. Uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there, because this is a pretty big, thick piece of aluminum that comes off the block. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll play with it after we weld it up. We got our tacks all in place, so I'll get this thing pulled off, finish weld it, and hopefully it still bolts back on. And there we go, guys. I got it all welded up. It's definitely not the prettiest, but hey, you know, it definitely should hold. So I'm gonna have to do some uh, grinding on the back of that so that way it sits flat on the bolt hole again. But other than that, we'll see if this works. Dang, guys. Like, I'm looking at this right now, and you just have to have some damn appreciation for this. Dry sump is all mounted up. Looks like we're not gonna have any issues. That's a thick enough plate or this thing's not really gonna bend. I'm not really worried about it. So went ahead, put the other cylinder head on, got the turbo manifolds put on in the final location. Like, keep in mind guys, I'm not building this to actually run. Right now we're just mocking it all up to see where everything's gonna sit because this is such a custom wild motor. Designing something one off we got to make sure everything works so just look at it guys it's it's a beautiful piece of art also gonna say blue turd dot shop guys i still have the new blue turd shirts i got the ones where they have the blue turd and the red turd on the back the building the impossible shirts i also have some uh, just red turd getaway ja uh, getaway driver championship shirts we still got them on the site if you want one go ahead and grab one uh, but for the meantime, this is pretty much all I can do until I get some more parts in and definitely all I can do until I get the car back. So guys, thanks for watching. We're going to keep pushing on assembling this thing. I'll have another video guys video for you guys soon.